Well, hey, everyone. God bless you. This is Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And I'm in the beginning of a series of messages called Resurrecting the Gifts of the Spirit. And today I'm going to be talking about the body of Christ. That's right, the body of Christ. One of the most well-known passages on the gifts of the Spirit, of course, is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it talks about the different gifts. And But also, Paul does a thorough explanation of talking about and calling the church the body or the body of Christ. So what's that all about? And why is he saying that? Well, I'm convinced that if you don't have an understanding of the body of Christ and how it functions, then you're not going to really understand the gifts of the Spirit. Now, you can go back to my last session where I did an introduction on the gifts of the Spirit. I told, I showed you that there are three different categories of the gifts of the Spirit, gifts of the Father, gifts of the Son, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can go back and, and uh, listen to that one again. Go to my, go to my YouTube channel at uh, Fred Crop K R O P P, and I'll be posting all those there. Or you can go to the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria's uh, YouTube channel, and they'll be there as well. So let's just get right into it. How many of you are ready for this? Come on, we're going to talk about the body of Christ. When was the last time you heard a message where someone explained the body of Christ? Well, here's what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through. 27. Now, before I read that, again, make sure you click share. Make sure you leave any comments in the chat. I need to know, is this helpful to you? Uh, are, is, are you encouraged by these messages so I can, uh, you know, how deep I go into the gifts of the Spirit are going to be based on your interest in them to some degree. All right. Well, let's just begin here. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting with verse 12. Paul writes and says, For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit they are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we are all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many, and the foot, because I, if the foot says, because I am not a hand, I'm not a part of the body, is it not for this reason any less a part of the body? And if the ear says, because I'm not an eye, uh, I am not a part of the body, is it not for this reason any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now, God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow the more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another." And if one member suffers, then all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. That's 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 27. Let's pray and let's jump in and get some insights. I'm going to break this down verse by verse. Father, I thank you again that you are training and teaching us and equipping us for the days ahead that you are preparing yourself a bride, an army, a people, a temple. God, I pray, a family. And God, you are wanting us to be well-equipped, well-trained. We're not to be ignorant of the spiritual gifts. So I pray for the spirit of revelation to be released right now, that we get it, that we can begin to get an insight about what is the body of Christ. So Father, I thank you for that. Bless each one that's listening now in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen to that?
All right, we're going to go first by verse. And those of you who are joining me, uh, we're talking about resurrecting the gifts of the Spirit, but you can't really fully understand the gifts of the Spirit unless you understand the body of Christ. And so I just read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. Now I'm going to go verse by verse, and let's see what Paul says about the body of Christ. So the, the verse 12 says this, for even as the body is one and yet has many members, all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. So here Paul is giving us a illustration utilizing our physical bodies for us to understand the body of Christ, which is the composite of all believers uh, on the face of the earth that are alive and also those that have gone on before us. So in order to understand the body of Christ, we must understand how our physical bodies work, right? The next thing he says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, he says, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So the second thing we, he tries to explain to us or is explaining to us is that when we were baptized, we weren't just baptized into Jesus Christ, which is the, most of our understanding, we're baptized into Christ, but we're also baptized into his body, the church, the believers that are on the face of the earth. And so when you were baptized, you were added to the body of Christ. Here's the third insight, and that is, he says, for the body is not one member, but many. So just like our physical body, that's the third thing, and that is that just like our physical body is made up of different parts, hands, eyes, mouth, ears, legs, feet, uh, you know, and all our inward organs, so is the body of Christ. It's made up of different parts as well. Now, there's a great insight, right? In other words, we're not all the same part, right? Uh, and so that's what the, the next point that the Apostle Paul so makes, and he's talking about the idea, those of you who are joining me, talking about the body of Christ. He's saying that the body of Christ is just like a physical body that's made up of different parts, and that all parts are important and all parts are necessary. That's the next phrase that Paul states, and that is 1 Corinthians 12, verses 15 and 16. He says, if the foot says, I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body. Is it not for this reason any less a part of the body? And if the ear says, I am not an eye, it, I, I, because I'm not an eye, I'm not a part of the body, is it not for this reason any less a part of the body? Now, here's the point. And sometimes you think, well, you know, um, uh, you know, I'm, I like certain other you know, parts of the body. I like, you know, I wish I see the people that are prophets or people that are evangelists or people that are gifted in worship and different things. There are different parts of the body of Christ. And we think that our part, who we are, is insignificant. And Paul's trying to drive home here that every and each and every member of the body of Christ must understand that it belongs. In other words, I'm telling you that you belong and your your important and valuable to the rest of the body. We need you. And the other thing I think he's alluding to here is that we must not put ourselves down because we're not like some other part of the body that we admire more than ourselves, right? I think it's so easy to do that. We hear somebody speak or we see somebody on the platform or we see somebody doing something that we're not doing and right away we begin to think about ourselves less than we should. The Bible says we're not to think of ourselves any less or any more than we should, but to have a sober understanding of who we are. So here it is. You are who God made you to be, and you are the part of the body that God has, has called you to be, function as, and you are super important and valuable to the rest of the body. If you don't function in your part, it's, it's going to hurt the rest of us. And so here Paul is saying that every part of the body is important and we should not put ourselves down because we don't sing like somebody else sings or preach like somebody else preaches or cast out demons like somebody else casts out demons, all those kind of things. Uh, he's trying to tell us you are valuable. And I'm telling you that you are a valuable part of the body. The next thing he says in verse 17 of 1 Corinthians 12, he says, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole 
were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? So here, what's he trying to say? He's saying that if we were all the same part of the body, then the body wouldn't function in its fullness. You know, if, if you look around uh, lately at people, they have hands and feet and eyes and ears and they have noses and they have all these things and all the parts of their body are important. You know, it's real tough to, you know, if you didn't have arms to scratch your ear, right, when it itches. Or, uh, you know, it would if, if you didn't have eyes, you'd be running into walls. And so he's saying that, that, that every, uh, if we're all one part of the body, if we're all just a hand or we're all just a foot or we're all just an ear, then the body is not going to function uh, the way it is intended to function. That's the fifth point. The sixth thing that he says this, he says this. Now, God, he says, has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be, he says? But now there are many members, but one body. Now, I want you to notice here, now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. Maybe you're a hearer, maybe you're a seer, maybe you are a discerner, maybe you are an intercessor uh, and or some part of the body of Christ, but God has placed you exactly where you're supposed to be. Now, here's a little insight, and that is, if you function in your part, you're going to be energized, you're going to be fulfilled, you're going to be a help to the rest of the body of Christ. And so the key is, is that God determines what part of the body you're supposed to be, and our part is to discover what part of the body am I, and then find that place. Uh, some The golfers call it, find a sweet spot on your club. And so there's a sweet spot for you. It's you being the part of the body of Christ that God has chosen you to be. Come on. That's why we need to be praying, saying, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life. Lord, I want to function in the part of the body that you called me to be. So that's the, the fifth point. Uh, the sixth point, or that was the sixth point, and then the seventh point is this, the eye cannot say to the hand, this is verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. So here it is, uh, we need to recognize, that's number seven, we need to recognize how much we need the other parts of the body who have a different role and a different function than we do. And so, you know, one way to say it is the miracle that you need is sitting next to you at church. We need the, all the parts of the body to be functioning. And we need to not like, well, we have favorites. We like prophets. We like, you know, uh, we like teachers. We like all these different other parts. We like miracle workers. We like all those things. And, uh, and, and we just disregard uh, the other members of the body of Christ who have a different function, but their function is just as important as all the functions. It's we are one body, he says, and every part needs to do its part. So we need to recognize how much we need the other parts of the body and not be judgmental because, you know, putting people down because they're not doing what we are doing. Maybe we have a special gifting, a special anointing on our life to do a certain thing. And the, the, the idea of that is not for us to judge others who aren't functioning the way we are, but to uh, begin to see the value, see the treasure in them, and begin to benefit from the gift that they are to the body of Christ or the member they are of the body of Christ. Here's the next thing. That was number seven. Here's the eighth thing that he says. He says, on the contrary, he said it is, he says it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we deem to be less honorable, on the, these we bestow more abundant honor, and our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. No need of what? of being recognized, but God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked, so that there will be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care one for another, or the same care for another. Now, what's the point he's trying to make here? Now, here's a, again, going back to the body analogy, when, you know, when we look at people, we're looking at all the outward parts of their body, 
their hair, their face, their eyes, their hands, their feet, you know, the things we can see on the outside. But how many of you understand that uh, you could have your arm cut off and you can still function, you can have an eye put out, you can still function, you can have go deaf in one ear and you can still function, but if you you if your heart fails, then your whole body is going to fail. If your liver fails, your whole body is going to fail. If your kidneys fail, your whole body is going to stop functioning. So he's talking about now that there are hidden parts in the body that are actually more important than the visible parts that we see on the outside. You know, now we don't go around to people saying nice liver, you know, right? Or nice kidneys, you know, because we don't see those. But again, there, there's outward parts of our body. If you your foot is injured or, and cut off, your body is still functioning. But if we do away with, you know, one of your vital organs, then your body's going to cease to function and is going to die. So he's saying that we need a solution. Well, how does this relate to our, our, our church world? Well, we have people called intercessors and people that are praying in secret, people that are one-on-one -on -one meeting with people and encouraging them and talking to them. Maybe they're not on the platform, uh, maybe they're working in the children's ministry. Maybe they're, you know, just um, in do, to helping to disciple somebody. And we don't see that in a public way. But you know what? They're super important. They're more important than the public ones, uh, you know, that are standing on the platform, that are preaching the message, that are prophesying and all those things. And all those things are good. And all those are necessary. But he, here Paul is saying we need to give more abundant honor to the invisible parts of the body, the parts that we don't see, the parts that we don't readily understand. That's why we need to give lots of appreciation, especially to intercessors. If there were not people that were interceding for the church, the church would be going nowhere. Come on, somebody. All right. So uh, that was the eighth thing, and that is that we must understand the value of of the non-visible parts of the body and give them honor, uh, uh, give honor to those who serve in unseen role, roles. Then he says, we need to give care, take care of them, make sure we're caring for them. And then this, he says this, and the last part of that, he says that there may be no division in the body. And so when we care for all the body, not just the outward parts, and we encourage all members of the body, then we're protecting the unity of of the spirit, the unity of the body. And so that's vital because if we don't have unity, then the body's going to self-destruct. Here's the next phrase, and that's 1 Corinthians 12, verses 26 and 27. He says this, if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. So he's, here he says, if one member is suffering, we're all suffering. Why? Because we're all connected together. You've got to understand, our brothers and sisters that are suffering in other countries under persecution, we, are, we need to suffer with them. We have to understand we're connected to them just because we don't see them, just because we're not with them every day and understanding the things that they're going through, especially on countries where uh, there, are, there are these rebels that are rising up, these uh, uh, from a certain religion, and they're attacking the church. I've heard some reports recently in, in Mozambique, uh, the country of Mozambique, how uh, these these peop these rebels are going in and wiping out churches, killing them, beheading them, uh, torturing them, just burning down their homes and their villages and so on there. Uh, and so here we have members of the body of Christ that are suffering and the body in the Bible here, Paul says, we need to suffer with them. Then if one member is honored, now here's the thing, uh, you know, um, it's a big deal for us to be honored here in America for some reason. And so we have a hard time when somebody else is getting honored and it's not us. But we need to understand when they're getting honored, it's an honor for the whole body of Christ. So when they're being uh, honored or lifted up, we need to rejoice with them. And be thankful because there we're all one body. That's the point he's trying to make over and over again. There is one body. We're members of one body. That means if 
One part of the body is successful, we're all successful. One part of the body is hurting, we're all hurting, right? I mean, think about it with your, you know, with the parts of your body. If you stub your toe, your whole body immediately focuses on that stub toe, right? If you, you know, hit your elbow, all of a sudden, their whole body is aware there's something wrong with one part of the body. And so we, you know, uh, and so we, 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 you know, we're, we're concerned about that part of the body and we want it to heal, right? So that was the ninth thing that he said about the body. And then uh, the the next thing that he says is he says this, and this is, actually he doesn't say this, this, this Paul writes in Colossians chapter one, verse 18. He says, talking about Jesus, he is the head of the body, the church. Jesus is the head of the body. So when we understand that we are the body of Christ, and that he is the head, then, and he's the one who's directing, he's the one who's leading, he's the one who is activating us as the members of the body of Christ, then all the glory and all the credit and all the praise goes to Jesus. Jesus is several places where it talks about Jesus is the head of the church, which is his body. Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. And so when we all function, our job is to get our orders from the head, to be directed by the head, to be focused on the head, Jesus Christ, be looking to him, what is Jesus doing, how do we cooperate with him. When we all do that, now remember, we'll all function exactly how we're supposed to function in the way we're supposed to function if we're all focused on Jesus, the head of the body of Christ. And here's the last thing that Paul, I want to, there's many things that Paul says in different ways. Of, of the epistles in the Bible about the body of Christ. But here's another one that is, I think, really important. This is found in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Paul writes and he says, As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine or teaching, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head. Here it is, the head, even Christ, from whom, now listen to this, the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. So there's a lot of words, but what is he saying? He's saying this, He's saying as we grow up in the part of the body that we are and that we are a, we are part, we are, we are a joint in the body. We are what connects the body together and as we all function in our place, in our part. And then he says that when every part works properly, then it causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. So what's the message there? The message is that when every member of the body functions in their God-appointed place in the body, the body is healthy and the body builds itself up in love. The body grows. And so it's so important. I just want to highlight one last time here. Uh, let me check my time here. Yeah, I've got a little bit of time. I want to go back over. Those of you that are joining here I've been talking about that you really can't understand the gifts of the Spirit without understanding the body of Christ. And so uh, I read through 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 to 27, where Paul ties together. This is the 1 Corinthians 12 is the gifts of the Spirit chapter. And Paul uh, spends half of it talking about the gifts, and the other half he spends talking about that we are the body of Christ. And so here's the, some of the points that he made. I'll just list them out here in closing. Number one, in order to understand the body of Christ, we must understand how our physical bodies work. Number two, when we were baptized, we, were, we weren't just baptized into Jesus, but we were baptized into his body. Number three, just like our physical body is made up of different parts, hands, eyes, ears, legs, feet, and so on, our inward organs, so also is the body of Christ. It's made up of different parts as well. Here's number four. Each member of the body of Christ must understand that, that we belong and that we are important and valuable to the rest of the body of Christ. We must be careful not to put ourselves down or you know, be, feel bad because we're not like some other part of the body of Christ that we seem to admire 
their gift or who they are more than ours. Number five, uh, if we were all the same part of the body, then the body would not function in its fullness. Number six, God places the members of the body exactly where he wants them to be. So it's God. Remember, he's the head, we're the body. The head tells, you know, functions through the body the way he wants to function. So it's not for us to decide where we are to be. We are to just begin to understand, grow in our knowledge and understanding of what is the part of the body that we are uh, to help the body of Christ. Number seven, we must recognize how much we need the other parts of the body that are, have a different role and a function, a function than we do. Come on, we're just we're just one part, and we we but we are to do our part. But we can't do our part without other people doing their part. And we must learn how to recognize them and value them, even though they have a different role in the body than we do. Number eight, we must understand the non that the non visible parts of the body. Uh, that they're the value of the non-visible parts of the body, and we must give them honor who serve in unseen roles. And so there's a whole parts of the body that we never see, we never know what they're doing, but they are just as significant and even more, what Paul says, than the visible parts of the body. And we need to not only care for them, but we need to guard them, and we need to to, be, to protect them, and then by doing that, we protect the unity of the body. Number nine, we must understand that when one member of the body suffers, we're all suffering. When one member of the body is honored, we're all honored with them. Come on, that's such a good point. Number 10, we must understand that Jesus is the head of the body, and when we function under Jesus, all the glory, and function in our place, then all the glory goes to him. And finally, when every member of the body functions in their God-appointed place, then the body is healthy and builds itself in love. Well, I hope this was helpful to you. Again, please leave your comments. Uh, in our next session, we're going to start to go into breaking down uh, the different gifts of the Spirit and their function. And remember, we're going to be talking about three categories of gifts. We're going to talk about gifts of the Father, which are called motivational gifts, gifts of the Son, which are ministry gifts, and gifts of the Spirit, which are manifestation gifts. So again, you, go, you can go back to my first introductory uh, uh, video in this series. Uh, by the way, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel when you get there. Uh, to go there and then subscribe and click on the bell. You won't miss any of these messages. So I want to pray for you right now. I'm sure that I've shared enough for you to begin to think, man, um, first off, I'm a member of the body of Christ. I was baptized in the body of Christ, and I have a function, and my function is valuable and important. So what part of the body am I? Okay, well, God will, as you begin to function, as you begin to step out in faith and do what God tells you to do, you're going to begin to function in your place in the body of Christ. So I want to pray for you in closing here. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters that each one will begin to appreciate not only who they are, but who the others in the body of Christ are and appreciate their function and understand that without each other, we can't really accomplish what you intend for us to accomplish as the body of Christ here on the earth. God, help us to have a greater awareness and appreciation for the other members of the body and to find our place in the body and function there and do what you've called us to do and be who you've called, called us to be. God, I pray that. And Lord, I believe as we do that, as every member functions, there's going to be healing, there's going to be health, there's going to be growth, there's going to be strength, there's going to be help that comes from one member to another. Lord, I thank you that that person sitting next to me has a treasure and a reward in them that I need from you. So Lord, I bless everyone that's watching. Make sure that you click share now as I bless you in Jesus' name. I want you to know that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Be blessed.